Sometimes, it seems to us that if we weren't born, the world would be the same. It seems that we don't have much influence on the people around us, on our country, or even less on the fate of humanity. But let's do a thought experiment and find out if it's true that the world would be exactly the same without us. Let's imagine that we have resurrected all of our ancestors and cued them in chronological order. From mother or father to Neanderthals and so on. Let's walk along this chain. What will our Stone Age ancestors tell us? How many generations will be able to understand our language? And what's out there at the end of this chain? There are hundreds of generations of people in front of us who are our distant relatives. How far can we go before we stop understanding each other? In fact, the fifth person in line will think you've insulted him and maybe even break your nose if you say anything about YouTube, bloggers, or the internet. For an English-speaking person, the 30th relative in line would speak an incomprehensible mixture of Norman and English, and to communicate with the 50th number, you'd have to learn Anglo-Saxon. The 100th person in this chain will speak one of the extinct Celtic languages. If you speak classical, Arabic, literary language, you'll be able to communicate with ancestors up to the 65th person in the chain without any problems. After that, you'll need Aramaic. If your ancestors spoke Chinese, then to get to the 70th person, you'd have to work on ancient Chinese. It sounds logical, but in practice, everything's far more complicated. For those whose native language is Spanish, I have bad news. You'll have to learn spoken Latin, Andalusian Arabic, and Sephardic. Good luck. If your ancestors speak Russian, then problems will arise at the 50th person, who understands only the common ancestor of the Russian and Polish languages. The 150th relative will greet you in Proto-Indo-European. You can answer him in Sanskrit, he'll understand. This man is only 300 meters from the beginning of your journey, but he lived at times when people didn't know about such material as iron and about such a thing as writing. Moving on, I have bad news. You'll not be able to talk to your 240th relative. Science knows nothing about their language. But let's get to person number 2500. This ancestor, completely different from you, is one of the few survivors of the ancient Toba volcano eruption. Most anthropologists believe that it was the volcanic winter 75,000 years ago that was the reason for the human population decline to 2,000 people. It turns out that seven and a half billion grandchildren would come for the holidays to this 2,500th person in the chain, since he is the great, great, great grandfather of all modern humanity. If every single person on Earth had lined up their ancestors in a chain, we'd all meet here. Or not. Where is our common forefather in the generation chain? If you look very far back, the Homo sapiens first appeared in Africa, so that's where our common ancestors were. They reclaimed other continents in three waves, the last and largest of which took place 50 to 70,000 years ago. All these people who survived and left offspring are our co descendants, and I'm your cousin. 100 times removed. But most likely we won't have to look that far back. In 2004, a group of researchers from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology created a mathematical model to determine our most recent common ancestor. And it turned out that this person lived only about 3,000 years ago. If we go back to our chain, this is the person number 100. Chains of all people living on our planet today will be centralized in this person. But that's not all. If we narrow the area and look for the most recent common ancestor, let's just say for Western Europeans, it will be a person who lived only a thousand years ago. And this person's only the 33rd in the ancestor chain. We could continue. If we take a separate country, for example Sweden, 
it's possible that the most recent common ancestor of the Swedes was born in the early 1500s. All people who are watching this video right now are kind of related. This mathematical model works the other way too. In 3,000 years, one of us will be a common ancestor for all people living in the fifth millennium. But let's get back to our past. What will happen if we go even further along the chain of our distant relatives? Who are we gonna meet after people? Let's start with the fact that ancestor number 7,000 will be of a different human species. This is Homo erectus, the upright walking human. Their brain is significantly larger than that of their ancestors, but it's still not enough to experience difficult emotions or for example, worry about the fact that each day is similar to the previous one. Go ahead, you can shake hands with Grecopithecus, who's regarded as the last common ancestor of human and chimpanzee. Here we say goodbye to the monkeys from which we evolved. And let's see, who else is there among our progenitors? Behind the Grecopithecus, a chain of creatures which look less and less like you and me, goes on and on and on for miles. For example, this Archisebus weighed only 30 grams. They lived in the territory of modern China about 55 million years ago. Are you tired? Let's walk a few more kilometers and look at the Purgatorius, who is considered to be the ancestor of all primates. This species existed at the same time as dinosaurs. And while you were looking at the Purgatorius, we arrived. At the end of the ancestor chain on the seashore stands Tiktaalik. It's basically the first creature that could stand in our understanding of this word. The chain of our ancestors has traversed 380 million years from a clumsy fish to the supreme creation, an office worker. But not everyone was so lucky. If you look around, you can see many neighboring chains that have been broken, losers, or not. For example, somewhere in front of your third relative, the chain gets broken. It's completed by Alan Turing. He's famous for being played by Benedict Cumberbatch. He was also one of the cryptographers who decoded messages encoded with the German Enigma machine. The information obtained by Turing and the British security forces helped the Allies win some military campaigns, saved thousands of lives, and probably changed the course of the Second World War. In addition to Turing, your family provided the survival of your kind. Those very ants who you didn't like in your childhood and the great uncles you saw every few years. Many of our ancient relatives, even though they left no offspring, still helped this chain not to be broken and to get to you. What would happen if something went wrong in our ancestors' history? If anything stopped Tiktaalik from coming ashore, life would last only underwater for some time. Then evolution would have left us with, for example, gills. Just in case, what if the ancestor of all primates, the Purgatorius, hadn't survived in the world with dinosaurs? Then we'd have to evolve from pterodactyls, and a human would have a bonus in the form of wings. Or what if people had decided not to leave Africa? To fit on one continent, we would have to get smaller. What if Turing had chosen another university and didn't become a mathematician and cryptographer? How would the Second World War end in that case? No, this has gone too far. Subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment with your versions below. What could go wrong in human evolution?